Hey guys, John V here from Phone Reno. Right now you're watching a video comparison between the Google Nexus 4 and the Apple iPhone 5. Two standout handsets this holiday season. We know with the Google Nexus 4, it features that awesome Android 4.2 a jelly bean experience. And top of that, it has some very cool qualities to its design. And on the other side, you have the Apple iPhone 5, which continues to be a very strong competitor in any day and age. So it's only natural for us to compare these two to find out exactly which handset's gonna be reigning supreme this holiday season. So if we take a look at both handsets from the front, it's a little bit obvious that the iPhone 5 still has the more attractive design. It's iconic, no doubt, but still has some premium elements to it that make it a standout design over the Google Nexus 4. It's both thinner and lighter, and also less cumbersome to hold in the hand versus its rival here, and we definitely like its premium nature. It's a brushed metallic case and gives it a really nice sturdy feel in the hand, and it just radiates premium in every aspect, whereas with the Google Nexus 4, from the front, it looks rather conventional, but in the back, you have that nice glass casing with that pattern design it gives it a little bit of premium uh, touch to its uh, design but overall though it's still prone to smudging and, and uh, fingerprints and whatnot and this is by far the more uh, slippery handset between the two. There's no arguing the fact that these two handsets sport stunning displays. On the iPhone 5, it's a 4-inch retina display with a resolution of 640 by 1136, so it has a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch, versus the larger 4.7-inch display of the Google Nexus 4, and its resolution stands at 768 by 12, 1280, so its pixel density equates to 318. So on paper, the uh, iPhone 5 has the uh, higher pixel density, but when it comes to practical usage, um, they still exhibit both the same level of fine detail. We could notice it here in the uh, web browser from the zoomed out view. We're able to view them from a normal distance away and our eyes really can't tell the difference as to which one is the uh, superior when it comes to pure details. See that they both employ IPS LCD panels. They exhibit some of the same qualities. You have some very natural looking colors, uh, a little bit warmer at times which gives it some vibrancy and on top of that they're very good when it comes to outdoor visibility. Uh, we have no problems actually making them out but we do notice that the iPhone 5's display sports the better viewing angles. You could tell at the widest angles the iPhone 5 maintains its clarity whereas with the Google Nexus 4 it does exhibit some level of distortion. On top of that we just noticed that the iPhone 5's display is a lot more sensitive than the uh, Google Nexus 4's display just because sometimes we had to press twice for, for us to activate something with the display. Above their displays, we find their respective earpieces and front-facing cameras. On the Google Nexus 4, it's a 1.3 megapixel camera, while on the iPhone 5, it's a 1.2 megapixel one. Even though we like the springy responses of both power buttons and volume controls of both handsets, we prefer the iPhone 5 set just because they're raised more and have a more distinctive feel. In terms of charging ports, the uh, the Google Nexus 4 utilizes the more favorable micro USB port uh, versus the uh, proprietary one that the iPhone 5 uses, which is none other than Apple's new Lightning docking port. Flipping them over, we spot their respective uh, 8 megapixel cameras. They both also feature LED flashes and the ability to shoot 1080p videos, but the iPhone 5 features an f2.4 lens and also a backside illuminated sensor. Uh, towards the bottom of the, uh, uh, the Google Nexus 4, you have the speaker, while on the iPhone 5, it's placed towards the bottom edge. Worth mentioning as well, both handsets have uh, closed designs, so there's no access to their internal batteries, nor is there any uh, any type of uh, memory expandability. So the iPhone 5 is available in 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte capacities, while the Nexus 4 starts at 8 gigabytes, and there's also a 16 gigabyte version. We mentioned on numerous occasions in previous comparisons, but we'll say it again. Between the two, the uh, iOS 6 experience of the iPhone 5 is by far the more straightforward and intuitive between the two. It hasn't really changed much in terms of the look and feel compared to the uh, first version of iOS, but still there are some great elements about it that we like. For example, the notifications panel is pretty useful. You have the multitasking pane when you actually double press the home button, and you have also access to the lock orientation, even music player. On top of that, you have also Siri uh, for your uh, your personal digital system which is nice gives you some useful information but as a whole it's still lacking in things like personalization that's where the uh, Android 4.2 Jelly Bean experience of the Google Nexus 4 really stands out you have that with it with its vast array of different widgets even in, with the new version of Jelly Bean here uh, you have some native support for some uh, some of the uh, 
the uh, the widgets directly from the lock screen, which is very useful and nice. On top of that, you have things like Google Now, which is uh, similar to Siri, but we find it to be a little bit more useful just because in addition to uh, giving us our organizational task, it provides for other useful information like sports scores, the weather, and even traffic directions, traffic and directions from your home to your to to your work or, or vice versa. And we just find it to be a lot more conducive to the needs of power users. Just looking at two now, it's quite evident that the Google Nexus 4 has the more spacious layout with its on-screen keyboards just because of the larger display, but both are very responsive and actually inputting text very quickly. With the iPhone 5, we definitely like its auto-correct feature. It's be definitely one of the best out there, but with the Google Nexus 4, you have some alternatives too in terms of input. You have the swipe-like method, which is great. And of course, when we switch to the landscape keyboards, again, you're going to get just more of a spacious layout with the Google Nexus 4. Surfing the web with both handsets is just a wonderful experience just because you get fast page loads, proper rendering, and very fluid navigational control. So with pinch gestures, kinetic scrolling, it's very responsive. And seeing that they have high resolution displays, uh, there's a lot of sharpness even with the fineness of text. But we still find that the uh, Google Nexus Sports have a little bit more features with uh, Chrome. It's very useful in the fact that you have the uh, very useful gestures in play to quickly open between, uh, switch between open tabs. And there's just a little bit more functionality when it comes to the sharing aspect uh, of, of the uh, Chrome browser. And it's also worth noting that the uh, Google Nexus 4 is available on HSPA Plus only versus the LTE versions of the iPhone 5. But nevertheless, if you're not in an area that has LTE, to tell you the truth, the page loads, it's not going to be that much of a difference between the two. Although there's nothing particularly new about the respective music players just because we've seen them in the past, but they definitely stand out just because they employ very cool looking features. For example, on the iPhone 5 you have cover flow as usual, it gives you that nice nice look as you're browsing through, through our selection here. And equally as so, you have the cool 3D carousel effect in play with the uh, Google Nexus 4 and its Google Music Play application. As far as the audio quality, we got to say it's kind of even with both the two, strong tones, a little distortion, and for the most part very pleasant. Not surprisingly, both handsets are more than equipped to playing high definition videos and with their sharp looking displays, it just really makes the experience wonderful. We had both the, both handsets playing the same video. We have to give a slight advantage to the Nexus 4 in this one, primarily because it has the larger display, but beyond that, they're both pretty much similar to one another. Surprisingly enough, the two handsets deliver some really good photos with their respective 8 megapixel cameras. And we have to say the quality is pretty similar, especially in, in uh, outdoor conditions where they produce very sharp looking details, natural looking colors, and good exposure. But we do notice that there's just a hint of vibrancy uh, seen with the, color, with the color reproduction of the iPhone 5. But beyond that, very similar with outdoor shots. The difference here is just in lower lighting conditions, the iPhone 5 just is able to actually brighten up shots so you see a little bit more details whereas with the uh, Google Nexus 4 it looks darker and on top of that it exhibits just a little bit more noise too. It might have been a very close race with their still image quality but when it comes to high definition 1080p video recording quality no question about it the iPhone 5 delivers the better results overall a lot better than what the Nexus 4 has to offer. The biggest thing about the Nexus 4 is that it were distracted by its softer looking details and just a more noticeable amount of artifacting going on even when you're panning or even holding the camera still the iPhone 5 just maintains that lovely visuals with good details and of course natural exposure as well. Generally speaking, we had very few issues when it comes to call quality with these two smartphones. Nearly excellent to tell you the truth as they provide us with very robust, clear, distinctive uh, voices on both ends of the line. But with their respective speakerphones, the iPhone 5 has a little bit of distortion with voices while the Nexus 4 emits just some crackling at the loudest volume setting. But with the iPhone 5, we, got, we also like its uh, noise cancellation properties. It works very well in different situations. In testing out their batteries, we had the Google Nexus 4 connected to T-Mobile's HSPA Plus network and the iPhone 5 relied on Sprint's uh, EVDO 3G network. And honestly, the battery life is very similar with both handsets. We're able to get at least one solid day of normal usage out of fully charged batteries, which is pretty average in this day and age. But of course, if you're using the iPhone 5 with LTE connectivity, you can, you can expect substantially lower results. Worth mentioning too, the uh, Google Nexus 4 offers wireless charging via the uh, Qi standard. So if you have a compatible device, you'll be able to charge it wirelessly. While with the iPhone 5, you have to do it the old-fashioned way via its, uh, its wired connection. On top of that, the Google Nexus 4 also offers NFC, so it has all the benefits of that. 
Here's the thing folks, both smartphones are wonderful in many aspects and there's very good reasons as to why they're really uh, prominent amongst the other devices out there in the market. Now with the Google Nexus 4, it really stands out for its low cost price point, its outright price point to be specific. At $300 for this 8 gigabyte version, there's a lot of value found with that. You're getting a premier smartphone at that cost, a lot of ton of features too, whereas with the iPhone 5, the 16 gigabyte base, base version, you're looking to spend over $550 just to pick up that model. On top of that, we definitely like the Google Nexus 4 for its uh, Android 4.2 Jelly Bean experience. It's vastly more comprehensive uh, than what iOS 6 on the iPhone 5 has to offer and really adheres to the uh, to power users, so it's definitely fitting for you. But between the two, the iPhone 5 just has the more well-rounded appeal with its uh, more premium design. It's, uh, you know, the sharp display is nice too. It has better wider viewing angles. On top of that, it takes the better photos and videos. So if you're into that, uh, definitely this is the device you wouldn't want to stick to, even though the uh, interface with iOS 6 is very simplistic and straightforward, not as extensive compared to the Android 4.2 Jelly Bean experience of the Google Nexus 4. It will, you know, uh, some people will definitely like it nevertheless. But either way, both handsets are definitely great in their own aspect. So if you'd like to learn more about both smartphones, guys, you can check out our website, phonerena.com. This is John V. Thanks for watching.